Hey, this is Cameron the Surf Wolf, coming to you from the Next Level Surf Camp Bali. In today's lesson, we're going to run through removal of your old wax and getting a fresh new wax job on your board that'll be the envy of all your friends. All right, let's get into it. So we're gonna need some equipment for this job. The first is wax. Here we have base coat, sticky top wax, and tropical hot, which are basically the same. So realistically, we're looking at two different compounds of, of wax, one being a harder base coat, and one being the top layer. It's not essential to have the base coat. You can just go with the top layer. You will find if you only use base coat that it won't be very sticky and uh, wax won't be probably very good on your feet. Uh, but today we're gonna go uh, five star service and go base coat and sticky top. All right, we also need wax comb, very essential. One of my favorite implements, the wax comb. I use it every day. Also, we're gonna go professional and we're gonna go uh, wax remover. This particular brand, Wax Off, nothing special. It's just a citrus degreaser. Um, you don't want to go and use petrochemical uh, degreases on your surfboard. You may find that the surfboard is literally melting in your hands if you use the wrong chemicals. So I don't know exactly, you know, any petro-based chemical I would be careful of and I would just probably suggest to use none at all. Uh, you can use alcohol to break down the wax, but these um, citrus um, wax remover, it tends to be the best. Also an old cloth. Um, to uh, rub off the wax with the citrus wax remover. Um, remembering that this cloth is going to be ruined. You know, if you just use it for deapplication of wax one time, it will never be clean again and that's all you're ever going to use it for. So just be aware of that in your uh, choice of cloth. So uh, let's get into it. Now my board is sitting out basking uh, or basking in the sun, uh, a la a sunbed out there now uh, with the wax melting a little bit or getting soft. Ideally, we want the wax to be soft and able to be removed with the on, wax key. Oh, sorry, wax key, wax comb. Sorry, removed with the wax comb. Um, there's an ideal, you know, um, texture. You can actually do it when it's not been melted. You can get it off with wax comb. And if you let it go too far and it goes completely runny, it just creates a big mess. So, uh, ideally, it's sort of just sort of soft and tacky, and this will just get it, most of it off. And then we're going to use the citrus. Um, remover to uh, get the last bit of it off and then we're going to start creating a bit of artwork with some uh, wax job. All right, well, let's roll and go and get this board. Okay, so the board's just out there getting a bit of sun at the moment and uh, as crazy as it sounds, uh, surfboards should really not see any sun, um, which is a bit of a ridiculous statement, but um, you know, ideally for the board itself and certainly the wax job, uh, you should never be leaving your board in the sun and this can be a cause of the actual wax related problems that you may have with the board is uh, if you leave it in the sun and it gets soft it's going to get sand and it, dirt in it, the wax will melt down and once you've melted the wax in a certain way sometimes you can never quite recover it to uh, its former glory so uh, first tip is just keep your board out of the sun and obviously when you're in the water that's not applicable and, and it's not a problem in the water anyway because the wax is not going to melt when it's in the water provided you have the right temperature wax and I'll run into that in a little second. The temperatures of um, the wax temperature is related to its uh, hardness and its chemical properties. Uh, you'll find the wax is designed for more warm water or harder, and the wax is designed for soft. Uh, sorry, for um, cold water or softer. Now, if you do use the uh, a soft water wax and then take it to the tropics, it will literally just melt off almost as you pull it out of the surfboard bag, and, and possibly will even be melting in the water if it's too extreme. Bearing in mind that the um, you know, the water temperature in Bali can be as high as 29 degrees centigrade, so uh, and some waxes that are you know very cold water waxes are designed more for you know 12 or 13 degree water. So just bear that in mind. Anyway, the board is ready to go. It's it's nice and uh, tacky. Let's have a look here. It's uh, let me see it here. 
Yeah, it's just about perfect. It, to be honest, it could probably even be melted a little bit more than this. Um, but it is what it is. It's in the sun at the moment and we're ready to go. So it'll be good enough. Uh, and to be honest, it's better than, than leaving it too long and having the wax go too soft because that really does create a lot of mess. So here we go. I'll take this board inside. It's, it's certainly easy to do all inside. So I'll take it inside and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's roll. Okay, so I've just got the board from out of the sun. Now we're just going to run the wax comb down. And you'll notice on the comb you've got a sort of a sharp edge. Sometimes you've got another sharp edge in the back here too. This one's got a bit of a scallop to get on the rails. Uh, and that's obviously for removing the wax. The comb part is for combing the wax after we finish. So just in case you're wondering what parts there are. And this is only just a funky handle or whatever it is in the end. So we're just going to uh, run the board, run it all the way down the board here. Got it, um, you know, 90% cleaned at this point. Now, from a from a performance point of view, it's not going to make any difference getting it any cleaner than this. From a visual point of view, it will probably make it just that little bit cleaner looking. So, what we're going to do today is, is just give you a quick rundown of um, how you're going to wax a surfboard. It's quite a simple procedure, but like everything, if done correctly, much easier. There's certain pitfalls and, and things you should be aware of. We're going to put wax on the top of the surfboard to provide grip for the body and the feet. Obviously the body while paddling and the feet while, while surfing the board. Very important because obviously the surfboard surface itself in the water is quite slippery and without the wax you will have obviously some big traction issues. So the, the important thing to remember is you want to put wax every, on every part of the surfboard that's going to require grip. So for a short board, that's anywhere from up to where your chest and hands will grab the board down to the tail. Often you'll have a tail pad on the back of a, of a short board, uh, which substitutes for the wax. Uh, so obviously you don't need to wax on the tail pad. And on a long board, you may go all the way to the tip of the nose if you're planning to nose ride the board. On a board like this in mid-length, we don't really need to go to the nose. We'll probably go up to about here which is plenty far enough, you know, if you did walk forward a little bit, you've got grip. If you're paddling a little bit further forward on the board, you're going to have grip. And that's quite important because the last thing you want is to have um, an issue where you slide forward on the board with your chest and, and slip off the front of the board. So, uh, you know, generally on the deck of the board, more wax is better than less wax in general. Uh, we're also going to use the wax comb to comb the surface of the wax because it, it pulls up the stickier wax from underneath. Again, not as critical on a fresh wax job, but uh, I generally use my wax comb almost every surf. So before I go every surf, uh, I will certainly comb the board quite um, intensely. Sometimes I'll then also reapply some wax. Sometimes, or you know, more often than not, if I reapply the wax, I'll actually comb the board, wax the board, and then comb the board a second time and that really gets it super sticky. And if you do that and you've got the right wax, you should never be having um, you know, wax issues. And wax issues really relating to you know, a point where you're slipping off the board or having trouble controlling the board 
due to lack of wax or slipperiness in the wax. Another thing to be aware of is the sunscreen that you might be using, particularly the spray sunscreens. Um, it can get on the board, particularly if you're carrying it on your arm. Uh, they can be on your hands. Any of those things on your board, once it hits the water, can make the board feel like a bar of soap. And obviously that's you know, going to make things problematic when you're surfing. So just be aware of those sorts of things. Uh, sunscreen really can be an issue. Another thing is, in the opposite scenario, is to, is to get sand in the wax, and the wax will become like sandpaper. Uh, which, if you have a wetsuit on, not such a big deal. If you don't have a wetsuit, it's going to be, you know, about as painful, about as pleasant as being sandpapered on your uh, skin, which, as you can imagine, is not a fun day out of the surf. So, all right, now, equipment-wise, very simple. We have a wax comb. You can get, this is a, you know, a nice one. I must say I like the ones that have a little bit of flexibility in them, as opposed to the stiff ones. They just tend to contour the board a bit more and give you a bit better result. I've had this one for years and I really like it. It's, it seems as though it's quite hard to get into wax comb these days. You'll get a lot of cheap ones with pairs of board shorts. Now the cheap ones are going to work fine, they'll, they'll do the job. Uh, but if you're going to buy one, I would suggest buying a larger one and buying one that's a little bit more flexible. And obviously they're cheap, you know, they're $5 or something like that. Um, Fine can be the biggest problem. We're also going to use a two-stage wax process. Now, it's not necessary to use a two-stage wax process. Uh, you can just use what would effectively be the top coat on the whole board. Um, what you can't really get away with is we're going to use the, the, the base coat first and then a top coat. And the base coat is a, it's, it's called hard base in this particular wax, but the base coat will be harder. Um, because it will be designed to deal with sort of higher temperatures, although that's not really strictly its component. But anyway, the, the, the base coat in, in uh, practical, practical terms will be harder and more resistant to melting off and more resistant to sort of wear, but not as sticky. And the top coat will be more, you know, um, uh, you know more susceptible to um, melting and uh, also even potentially more potential, more susceptible to getting stuff stuck in the top and will probably require more reapplications because it gets worn off a little bit easier. So the, the purpose of the two-stage process is to provide a bit of a solid layer on the bottom, of which let's even call it half to three quarters of your total wax might be the base coat, and then you just put a, a nice sticky coat on the top. But as I said, if you only have one cake of wax, let's assume it's the top coat, and that is all you need. So you, you really don't need to do it in this two-stage process. Now, with that all set and done, let's take the wax out. Most of the time it's going to be a square or a rectangle. It can be a circle. I much prefer a square or a rectangle because you want that, that shape. Circular shapes really doesn't make it any easier to wax the board. Now, we went to start off with getting some wax. Now, this board, although it's been cleaned, it does have a little bit of wax residue on it. So, it'll probably make it a bit easier for me to get this wax started at the beginning. If you've got a fresh board that you just bought, um, the very first time you apply the wax, it, you know, it can be quite difficult. The board won't necessarily want to sort of have the wax stick to it. Obviously, once the wax starts sticking, it's all good to go. So what we want to do at the start of the waxing process is to just get um, the board to be sticky, because really it's not at the moment. And once the board is sticky, it will then start tearing the wax off the, off the bar of wax and things will make it become a lot easier. So I think the easiest way to do that is to start with some nice diagonal lines, it really doesn't matter. You can start it just about any way that gets this job done, but this is just the way I do it. You know, people have their methods and, and this is just the way I've done it and the way I've had good success. Uh, you could also start in theory with some circles. I generally try to finish with the circles, start with the nice diagonal lines, get that nice layer down, and then top it off with circles at the end to give you those nice bumps. But as I said, there is more than one way to skin a cat in this scenario. So let's start, and I think we'll, we'll, our start of our wax will start up about this far up the board. I'm just going to go diagonals down like this, all the way down, and then start by just going up the board as well. Right, and as you can see, we've got a, you know, a fairly consistent line across the top there. And it's actually going on quite easily, even though it's the base coat. And sometimes you will find, uh, particularly if it's a cold weather, the base coat and a hard wax will be quite hard to, to get it to stick to the board. Cross-hatching the other way, and this is just to get the full coverage on the board. It doesn't have to be on this angle. There's nothing particular about the angle. It's just getting full coverage. And you can 
can see it's starting to sort of grip now, which is what I'm trying to do. just to make it look nice, purely aesthetic on the front there. Uh, I might even just sharpen up the back there. And I might even just go down the rails, just like that, just to make it all consistent. And also remember that I'm just trying to get that base on the board. Wherever we have this base amount of wax, waxing over the top of that will be significantly easier. Surfing the board much and you keep it clean. 
So, you know, it's not the sort of thing that you have to do very often. But at the same time, it is the sort of thing that you'll need to do straight away. If you ruin your wax, my recommendation is take it off and start again because if it all melts down, it's never quite the same again. Alright, and I think we've got, we're already starting to get these little bumps, even with the hard base. So that's probably enough. Now, I would probably, I'm, I'm a big fan of combing. I think we'll just give it a comb on the hard base as well. can melt in a minute or two. If you leave it in the, in the midday sun for only that amount of time, you'll probably find it's getting soft and tacky. So it, it's definitely something to be aware of. Not as big of an issue in colder climates. It's certainly not a big issue if you don't have heavy sun. It's, it's more even related probably to the, the um, intensity of the sun than it is the, strictly the temperature. Anyway, with the sticky top then, same procedure. Now we're not even going to bother doing the the cross hatching with the sticky top, we're going to go straight to circles. So, straight to circles here. And all we're doing is putting another coat of wax on top of this that's a little bit stickier. There's no fanciness here at all. Exactly the same method. Okay, I'm going to get it nicely out of the rails. Get a nice good bit on the back there in case you really do get your back foot back. Going up the rails again. And then we'll fill in the middle. on the surfboard. That amount of coverage is good. It's going to work well. Alright, let's get out there and surf.